Ukraine is considered to be an aviation state. Thanks to the high level of development of aircraft construction, Ukraine is on the list of the most developed countries that are capable of full design and construction of aircraft. From an idea to flight and launch, from drawings to mass production, there are less than 10 such countries in the world – the US, Germany, France, Brazil, Canada, and Ukraine. The history of aviation and rocketry in Ukraine is more than 100 years old. The development of aviation in the former Tsarist Russia began in Ukraine, where the first test flights were conducted and the first helicopter and airplanes of various modifications were designed. During the First World War, Ukrainian pilots were the first to develop and apply air combat tactics. Modern jet aviation in the post-Soviet space also exists as thanks to the designs drafted by Ukrainian aviation engineers. The names of the founders and modern-day cosmonautics are also associated with Ukraine. Over the first decades of the space era, Ukrainian scientists, designers and rocket constructors were involved in almost all of the most strategically important space projects – the launch of the first artificial satellite of the Earth, the flight of the first human being into space, flight programs in the near-Earth orbit, the Moon and other planets of the solar system. It all started back in the 19th century. On the territory of the Russian Empire, the first documented flights were conducted in Ukraine. Some 300 kilometers from Kiev in the village of Voronitsy in the present-day Vinnytska Oblast. In 1869, after his resignation, captain of the first rank of the Russian Navy, Alexander Mazhainsky, settled in his ancestral home. In 1873, he built a planner, which were dragged by horses, and then he flew across the river. At the same time, the first experimental air flights were done in France and Germany. And in December 1903, Wilbur and Orville Wright made the first launch of a plane they had designed and built. They became known in aviation history as the Wright brothers. These successful ventures of foreign aviators opened the horizons to the sky for many Ukrainian enthusiasts. In 1905, the first aeronautical section in the Russian Empire was created at the Kyiv Polytechnic Institute on the basis of an aviation club. This was how the Ukrainian School of Aviation Construction came to be. In the summer of 1909, after a series of experiments, a student named Boris Delone built a biplane. Together with his father, Professor Nikolai Delone, he published a brochure in Kyiv showing the design of an inexpensive and lightweight biplane with instructions on how to fly this aircraft. Later, the chief designer of the rocket and space industry of the USSR, Sergei Korolev, aircraft designer Oleg Antonov, and many other future designers in the aviation industry did their studies based on that very pamphlet. Later, Professor Delone founded an aeronautical society in Kyiv under the auspices of the Kyiv Aeronautical Society Aviation Workshops, in which students of polytechnics started producing aircraft according to their drafts was created. The future designer of helicopters, Igor Sikorsky, actively worked in these workshops. At that time in the year 1911, Sikorsky had already made his first attempts to develop a helicopter. He had created the first two of his Bi-S-1 and Bi-S-2 aircraft together with Fyodor Belinkin. Further, he created his own planes. Sikorsky's C-6A aircraft won a prize at the Moscow Aviation Exhibition in 1912. Following that, the Kyiv press actively followed Sikorsky's activities in the aviation industry. In particular, the newspaper Kyiv Lanin wrote in detail about his activities. Another member of the Kyiv Aeronautic Society, the son of the famous Ukrainian sugar baron Fedir Tereshchenko, built on his own money one of the first aviation planes in the Russian Empire in 1909 on the territory of the family estate Krasnaya in the Zhytomyr Oblast. There he started producing planes according to his drafts. In 1914, before the First World War broke out, he received his first order from the military for the production of the T-5 aircraft, which he himself had designed. It was on this plane that Captain Yevgraf Kruten began his military career as a World War I fighter jet ace pilot. Kruten is considered a military theorist and a founder of the tactics of fighter aviation, which formed the basis for the modern methods of air combat. He is the pioneer of the idea of flights of fighter jets in pairs, which was widely applied during World War II. Yevgraf Kutin is undoubtedly our Ukrainian pilot. He was born here in Kyiv, graduated from the Cadet Corps in Kyiv, and after that fought in western Ukraine. Here he died and was buried in his native Kyiv. In air battles, Kruten destroyed 15 enemy planes, and in the ratings of air aces of that time, he took second place after the staff captain Alexander Kazakov, who shot down two more planes.
Having such combat experience, Cruden made the greatest contribution to the development of the theory of air battles by writing pamphlets titled Manual for a Fighter Pilot, Military Aviation in France, and others. In these works, he outlined his views and suggestions on the use of aircraft in fighter squads, about the airborne combat order in the air, the organization of air units, substantiated the basic requirements for fighters and his work Air Combat, became the first textbook for aviators of the Russian Empire and later the Soviet Union. He flew from the side of the sun, which was known as the so-called invisible zone, slopped down a bit below the enemy plane and then opened fire from his machine gun. In this so-called dead zone, the enemy aircraft could not have possibly detected him, which is exactly the way he managed to win the air battle. The heavy aircraft Ilya Marumets, designed by aviation engineer Igor Sikorsky, took an active part in the First World War. It became the world's first bomber, which was put into mass production. In February 1918, Sikorsky immigrated to the U.S., and in 1923, he founded the Sikorsky Aircraft Corporation for the production of helicopters in the U.S. Today, the Sikorsky Aircraft Corporation continues to produce helicopters of various modifications. The presidents of different countries fly on Sikorsky aircraft. The helicopters are designed to extinguish forest fires and work as air hospitals, because they can evacuate people from places where a regular aircraft cannot land. These helicopters are used by many countries around the world for the supply of weapons. The path of life and professional success of Igor Sikorsky became an example for the young Ukrainian student Sergei Korolev, who became the future founder of practical cosmonautics. In the fall of 1924, he entered the mechanical faculty of the Kyiv Polytechnic Institute. He became interested in this university mainly because it was renowned for its highly respected and professional staff. It had a popular aeronautical club and the fact that Igor Sikorsky had studied in this institute in his adolescent years in Kyiv. In the fall of 1931, Sergei Korolev headed a research and development organization in Moscow that was developing high-powered rockets and engines. It was there that he had met a Ukrainian scientist named Yuri Kondratuk, who was basically considered by respectable scholars the inventor and developer of the theory of space flights. By that time he had developed, first of all, the theory of orbital flights. He said that if we want to conquer outer space, we accordingly must start thinking about how to launch some artificial satellite. Take the position of this artificial satellite and use it as a base. In practice, this was one of the main discoveries. The satellite as a base and later a manned spacecraft can be landed from a satellite to the planet so it could fly up and down. In this situation, this was his main invention. In his book, The Conquest of Interplanetary Spaces, in addition to the theory of orbital space flights, Yuri Kondratuk described in detail the structure of a carrier rocket and the factors that affect its speed. Inventions related to oxygen-hydrogen mixtures that could be the basis of rocket fuel, which are used today in the sphere of space exploration. In 1932, the book of one of the founders of theoretical cosmonautics, Konstantin Tsiolkovsky, was published. There, he cites extracts from Kondratuk's letters as an example and refers to his works. Unfortunately, the cooperation between Korolev and Kondratuk did not take place. Kondratuk, as a former White Guard soldier, had his past and refused to disclose the details of his biography when applying for a job, and Korolev soon fell under the repressions of 1937. However, the experiments of Yuri Kondratuk were used in the late 1960s by American scientists when the Apollo spaceships were sent to the Moon.
In 1931, Sergei Gorlov began studying jet movement in Moscow. A young Ukrainian fellow named Arhip Lulka graduated from the Kyiv Polytechnic Institute. Even in his student years, he began working on the creation of a turbojet engine for aircraft. He worked with this idea at the Kharkiv Turbo Generator Plant in the Design Bureau of the Kharkiv Aviation Institute and then at the Kirov Plant in Leningrad. Arhip Lulka developed a scheme for a two-circuit turbojet aircraft engine. In April 1941, he received an author certificate. As it turned out later, a great future awaited this invention. This scheme was presented in the materials submitted to the author's certificate. This author's certificate was received on April 22, 1941. The scheme became the basis for modern aviation, both passenger and military. In June 1941, the jet engine was three-fourths ready, but further work on it was interrupted by the war. And on August 18, 1947, in Tushino, near Moscow, people came not only from the capital, but from all over the Soviet Union. All the acting leaders of the Communist Party and the government, headed by Joseph Stalin, came to the airfield to celebrate the unveiling of this new aircraft. All gathered to see the aviation parade on the Day of Aviation which was at that time one of the favorable holidays of Soviet people. The spectacle was truly grandiose. At this spectacular parade left the audience completely awestriken and dumbfolded. Over the Tushino stands for the first time flew two planes with turbojet engines designed by Arkhip Lulka. It was a fighter interceptor of Pavel Suhoi's design office SU-11 and an awesome jet bomber IL-22 by Illusions Design Bureau with four engines by Arkhip Lulka. When we fly by planes of different classes in different countries on different continents, whether it's a Boeing, an Airbus or other planes, we fly almost always on planes with engines designed according to the blueprints of Arkhip Lulka. This is written about in many Western encyclopedias. The Ukrainian pilot Sergei Korolev entered the history of world astronautics. He created the world's first intercontinental ballistic missile R-7, which became the basis for the creation of a further series of launch vehicles. Under the leadership of Korolev, a manned flight into space was conducted in April 1961. The first spacecraft of the series Luna, Venus, Mars, Zond and others were created under his leadership. In the 1960s, the Nobel Committee wanted to award a prize to the discoverer of outer space, but the Soviet authorities did not allow this. Sergei Korolev, as a general designer of the rocket and space industry of the USSR, was a top-secret individual. His name was never mentioned to the public and General Secretary of the Communist Party of the Soviet Union, Nikita Khrushchev, did not want to make this fact public information to the world. Among the renowned creators of rocket and space technology, there were many Ukrainian experts. Among them are the associate of Korolev and founder of the Soviet liquid fuel rocket engine, Valentin Hlushko, the designer of missile systems, Mikhail Yangel, and others. The development of the Ukrainian aviation industry is closely connected with the name of the aircraft designer, Oleg Antonov. In the early 1950s, he headed the Antonov private aviation enterprise in Kyiv, which managed to break the monopoly of U.S. aviation corporations and take the leading position in the world in the design and manufacture of military transport aircraft. The first in this series was the N-8, which was called Flying Whale because of its dimensions and its unprecedented payload of more than 10 tons. It became the basis of the large family of specialized transport planes. The N-12 will already be able to lift 20 tons and fly to India, Africa and the drifting stations in the North Pole. Then there is the world's largest turboprop transport plane, N-22 Ante, and the N-124 Ruslan, which at the end of the last century deprived the American Lockheed C-5 Galaxy of the title of the largest aircraft in the world. And finally, the N-225 Maria. Only this Ukrainian plane can lift 253 tons of cargo into the air. The Maria has set 240 world records and it has no equals throughout the world. The pride of the Ukrainian aircraft industry, MRIA, and other achievements in the aerospace industry, which at different historical stages held first place in the development of the blue skies and outer space, are today rightfully called the wings of Ukraine.